Well, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me here. Um, the idea here is to talk a little bit about um, how we, at our company, put these two ideas together. The idea of growing a, a business in a profitable, sustainable way, and at the same time, doing it with uh, fewer natural resources and in a responsible fashion. On the environmental goals, it's all about water, heat, energy, and recyclability of our by byproducts. I'll just give you an example about water usage. We have a target that's public, and it's measured by a third party in the audit company to reduce uh, until the end of next year, 2012, the water usage that we have in 2009 by 30%. Let me talk about the second set of goals that we have on responsible drinking. We don't need irresponsible drinking to have a great business. I always like, on, in an audience like this, I always like to say, okay, how many of us here go out at night, or go to a football game, or have a beer, or have a glass of wine, we drive home, and nothing happens? How many of us? I think all of us. Unfortunately, there is always that 0.51%, 0.1% of the population that use our product in the wrong way, like they can use a car in the wrong way, right? And they cause, and they are in the front page of the paper. So I think this whole thing about irresponsible drinking is something that we fight very hard with governments, parents, NGOs to curb it. It's bad for our industry, bad for our business, we don't need it. The other thing we say is that dreaming big or dreaming small takes the same amount of energy. So why not dream big? Because at the end of the day, if you don't set the bar higher, nobody will, will come and set to you. And uh, it's very sad for you to go through life as a human being without never knowing exactly what your full, full potential is. And the thing about setting a dream, a, a stretch dream, is the, thing, the same thing as the high bar, the high jump. If you set the hurdle here, nobody's gonna jump here. People jump enough to clear the hurdle. If you set it here, then you know how much people can go, and at some point you start getting to the limit with the knowledge you have, and then you move on to the next knowledge set. So a dream is a very powerful thing. It gets people, if credible, it gets people a sense of purpose. It inspires the group. It gets them to put their passion in what we're trying to do, the way we're trying to do. The best talents you can attract, the better chance you, you, you have of building a great company. Great companies are built by great people. Great people attract more great people, and that's the motto that we have to continue to think about. So we have to recruit very talented people, people that share our dream and the way we want to build a company in a responsible fashion. Talented people like three things that we learn. They like a, a, an environment, a company environment, where meritocracy, candor, and informality are things that are in there. Let me explain, meritocracy. They want a place where people are valued for what they bring to the table, for the results they deliver and not for their passport or last name or who indicated them or seniority. So meritocracy is key. Informality, the ability to speak up your mind. Talented people like to participate, they like to discuss, they like to be exposed, and they like an environment that will give that opportunity for them. Candor, they like feedback, they like to know where they stand, they like to have targets that are measurable, clear, to the point, with metrics so they can self-evaluate themselves and when there is evaluation at the end of the year in terms of performance, there are no surprises. So they know what to expect. So again, to deliver on big dreams, you need very talented people. And what we learned, very important, in pursuit of our dream of building the best beer company in the better world is four things. First, you need to have the performance culture in place to turn dreams into realities. Otherwise, it's just a great idea, no reality. For us, it has been dream people culture. For other companies, it can be different. But you need a performance culture to get dreams to realities. KPIs, tracking and monitoring, everybody with KPIs, targets. Second, you need to embed the better world, embed the better world part in the dream of the company. So it becomes a company dream, some other companies would call it mission, to get the embrace, to get the buy-in from everybody. The third one is translate dream in metrics. Through metrics, you raise bars. Okay? By raising bars, you open gaps. By opening gaps 
and aligning targets and incentives, you get people to close those gaps so you can open the next gap. So it's all about open gaps, close gaps. And you can only manage, manage what you measure. So put KPIs. Sometimes in sales, marketing, finance, we put KPIs. On Better World, it's ideas, no KPIs. Translate those ideas into KPIs. And the fourth one is leadership that needs to be redefined. In the old days, as a CEO, my board, my investors will come to me and only care about the business performance. Today, they continue to do that like never before, but they also say, okay, what about the world you live in? So it's this plus this. It's a tougher job, but it's the right one because it's the one that will create a better business environment for us to create a sustainable business and for our employees, for us, for our families, a better world that we all live in. We're not aliens, we all live here. Um, so there's been a lot of focus on Brazil uh, at our conference and in the sustainability community. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation leading up to Rio Plus 20. That's right. BSR just opened a Brazil office. Um, so I'd love for to just get your perspective as to what do you see, what are the trends in sustainability in Brazil and what, what do you see from a Brazilian perspective as to how this better world concept plays out? I think people in Brazil are very conscious also because of our natural resources. You go to Brazil, I mean, one third of our territory is the Amazon forest, one third, okay? Then you look at another very important part of Brazil is the Western Pantanal. It's like Africa, where you have animals, you have, you know, huge amount of land just with animals and stuff, so, and big farms. So, I mean, a lot of our land is still in a very good condition in terms of natural resources and stuff. And we live, our economy is a lot based on those natural resources. So people, learn, even if you go to the Amazon today, the Indians there, for example, they learn that if they keep their environment whole, they'll attract tourists in a disciplined way, they will get money from that, and they live from that. If they destroy that, people won't come anymore, they'll have one, loss, one less source of income. So again, it's win-win. It's good for business, good for the environment. So I see Brazil learning from other countries, not perfect, but going very fast towards sustainability because, again, it's good for the people, good for the environment. 